Good evening, everyone, and a very special good evening to you, John. I am so disappointed that I can't be with you tonight. Unfortunately, the TV business, a.k.a. the May ratings book, is keeping me here in Arizona, and it is preventing me from being with you all in Westfield to share in this well-deserved tribute. By way of a brief introduction, for those of you who may not know me, my name is Doug Meehan. Currently, I anchor the morning news for the NBC station here in Phoenix. But 28 years ago, I was a student at Westfield State College, and yes, I was there at the beginning. September 1986 was my <clears throat> first senior year, and it was also John's very first year teaching at Westfield. Now, to provide the younger folks in attendance this evening some perspective, the number one song blaring out of our boom boxes that Wednesday after Labor Day was Bananarama's Venus. Ronald Reagan was president. Nobody ever heard of the four letters NCIS, but we did know that Mark Harmon was hailed as the sexiest man alive because of a show called St. Elsewhere. Whitney Houston was this brand new singing star. Some computer dude known as Bill Gates was 30 years old. And believe it or not, Lammers Hall was considered the new dorm on campus. Meanwhile, on the third floor of Eli, the mass communications department included names like Ed A. Barr, Joe Tobia, Brooks Robards, Ralph Donald, a quirky yet wonderful man named John Maritko, and yes, the new guy, John Palmer. Despite earning the distinguished degree of doctor, he insisted on that first introduction that we call him John. From the moment he entered our classroom, we knew there was something different about this bearded professor. His kind, gentle, and dare I say, loving approach to life seemed a bit odd at the beginning, but in short order, you quickly realize that taking a class with John was going to be a special experience. More importantly, it was also a class that you wanted to attend. You wanted to be in his presence. Just being around John made you feel special. Now, back in a time when students actually got formally dressed up to go on field trips to Boston, John's relaxed and welcoming approach to teaching was a breath of fresh air. John, I got to tell you, your constant positive reinforcement, even for those of us who are less than a little stellar with the studies, always made us feel as though we had a chance to achieve. You never made it about what we couldn't do, but rather it was always about what we could do. Your ability and your patience to discover the hidden potential that existed in each of us was truly a gift. But your grace, it extended beyond the textbooks. I can recall a few months into that first semester, some of us were juggling the responsibilities of schoolwork with the um, so-called other distractions that college life can often present. Several of us in your class may have been paying a little too much attention to a certain MTG production of a chorus line rather than whatever class we were taking at the time. And it's kind of funny what you remember and what you don't remember at times like these. Instead of coming down hard on us to shape up or ship out, you actually celebrated the impending opening night with a surprise cake for the entire class, suggesting that our classmates go check out the show, support one another. No lecture, no paper or test could ever impact a young person's mind the way that single act of kindness did late on that November afternoon. You taught us what it meant to be part of a greater community, to be there for each other, and to celebrate life's special milestones. Well, this evening, this is one of those moments. John, it's a time to celebrate what you've accomplished, the impact that you've had on the generations of Westfield State students, as well as the entire Westfield community. You know, it kind of reminds me of my favorite movie, Mr. Holland's Opus. The lead character, played by Richard Dreyfuss, comes to the end of his high school music teaching career. One that he, by the way, reluctantly entered 30 years prior. He felt as though he never accomplished his life's dream of composing the great symphony, one that would make him rich and famous. Well, as it turned out, Mr. Holland achieved a success far beyond riches and fame. Look around you. There is not a life in this room that you have not touched. And each one of us is a better person because of you. We are your symphony, Mr. Holland. We are the melodies and the notes of your opus. And we are the music of your life. 
John, you are our Mr. Holland. We are the lucky ones to have been the recipient of your heart, your soul, and that special gift of what it truly means to be a teacher. As you enter the next chapter of your life, go forward with the knowledge that you have made a difference in the lives of all of us. We are better people for having you in our life. Whether it was for as short as one semester or in the case of you and me, nearly a friendship of 30 years, I will leave you for now with this Irish blessing. May your days be many and your troubles be few. May God's blessings descend upon you. May peace be within you. May your heart be strong. May you find whatever you're seeking, wherever you roam. Until we raise a glass again, my friends, cheers. We love you.